A few thousand years ago, mankind thought the Earth was the centre of the universe, a giant piece of rock floating in a cosmic ocean. We saw the Sun and nearby planets dancing in the night sky and assumed that they must orbit us. Like toddlers looking out into space, we were completely self-centred in our beliefs, with little awareness to the true scale and beauty of the universe. Over time, we have learned to harness the power of our technology, along with our curiosity, in the never-ending search for truth. What we have learned over the last few hundred years is that Earth is definitely not the centre of the universe. It's not even the centre of our solar system, and that our solar system is but a drop in a much larger structure, the Milky Way galaxy, consisting of many billions of stars, not just our own sun. And as we have continued to peer further into the distant, darkest regions of space, we've come to realize that the universe is so much larger than we ever could have imagined. The end of our observable universe, the cosmic horizon, sits at a whopping 46 billion light years away. Yet this is almost certainly not where it ends. Beyond this point is what we call the unobservable universe, a region we cannot see and likely will never be able to see because the laws of nature forbid us to. Like young adults, humanity now finds itself thrust into a world bound by laws it cannot escape. But these are not man-made laws. These are the laws of nature, the very fabric of time and space itself. With our spirit and curiosity still unbound, we yearn to know more. What lies beyond this horizon? And the ultimate question, how big is the entire unobservable universe? First, it is perhaps best to define what we mean when we say the observable universe. This is the furthest distance we can see from Earth no matter which direction we look in the night sky. You can imagine it to be like a bubble of space-time in which the Earth is at the centre and the radius is the maximum distance light could have travelled since the universe began. Anything inside this bubble is observable to us, and anything outside of it is not, because light has not had enough time to reach us. To get a better idea of how big this bubble is, we really need to find out how old the universe is, and how far light could have travelled in that time. We suspect the universe to be around 13.8 billion years old. Although there are many methods to come to this figure, one of them includes placing a minimum age on the universe by finding very old things inside it. For example, one of the oldest stars we know of is a star called Methuselah, sitting only 190 light years away, practically a stone's throw in galactic terms. This star has been dated to be around 13.7 billion years old, meaning the universe, at the very least, must be this old. Using this as a ballpark figure, we just need to work out how far light could have travelled in this time in order to define the size of our bubble. This is where things get a little weird. You see, space has an interesting property. It expands. Due to an incredibly mysterious force known as dark energy, space is pushing itself apart and new space is being made in its place. Like a chocolate muffin being cooked in an oven, galaxies are like chocolate chips slowly being pushed away from each other in the ever-expanding muffin of space. We still don't know exactly why the muffin is expanding. All we know is that it is consistent. We call this Hubble flow or the Hubble constant. This also means that the light which is now reaching us from 13 billion years ago represents stars and galaxies which are actually much further away, around 46 billion light years in fact, making our visible universe, our observable bubble, around 93 billion light years in diameter. But this is not where the universe ends. In fact, it's not even close. Though we appear to be at the centre of an ever-expanding region of space, expanding in all directions, in reality, 
that doesn't have to be the case. The universe could be far larger than what we can see, millions of times larger, and we could be placed anywhere amongst it and not even know it. Just imagine another Earth, let's say Earth 2.0. From their perspective, they seem to be at the centre of their own ever-expanding region of space. Just like us, they cannot see outside of their own bubble. In reality, neither one of us might be near the centre. And if our bubbles don't intersect, well, we can never hope to even know the other exists. This is not to say that our bubbles represent multiverses. We're in the same universe, just so unfathomably large that we're simply unable to see each other, or even the entire rest of the universe. So the question really becomes, how can we see past this horizon? Are we able to find clues within our visible universe to suggest the true size and scale of the bit we can't see? The answer is yes, we can. By considering how curved space itself is, we can build a geometry for the universe, which in turn can help us model its size. Imagine space to be broken up into many small cubes of X, Y, and Z volume. Line these cubes of space in a straight line on the surface of Earth, and eventually you would circumnavigate the globe, returning to where you started. This is what positively curved space looks like, and the closed universe it creates would have a spherical geometry. No matter which direction you go in this type of universe, you would always return to where you started. Although space itself can expand, like the individual cubes growing larger, the geometry would mean they still curve back on themselves, setting a finite limit for the overall size of the universe, a size we can calculate based on how intense the curvature we see. However, if there is no curvature to space, a curvature of zero, you could imagine it to be flat, like stacking the cubes in a never-ending sheet that continues on into the horizon. Moving in any direction in this type of universe would mean you never return to where you started, making it infinite by its very nature. Similarly, if it were negatively curved, it would also be infinite although the geometry would be hyperbolic and saddle-shaped. Summarising these three possibilities, we can see the importance of determining the curvature of space. Only one geometry results in a finite universe, and the other two suggest it would be infinite. So how curved is the universe? What is its true scale? From our analysis of multiple sources, scientists have concluded that the universe is almost completely and utterly flat. In fact, the more we analyse the data, the closer to perfectly flat it becomes, with a current estimate of around 0.0002. Just like how we can put limits to the age of the universe based off the age of Methuselah, we can also do something similar with the curvature of space and the size of the universe. Based on the flatness we measure, we can confidently say that the smallest the universe could possibly be is a minimum 250 times larger than the current observable universe. This of course is not its actual size, just the minimum size. Alan Guth, the godfather of cosmic inflation, used calculations to estimate that it's way larger than this around 150 sextillion times larger than the observable universe. To put this into perspective, imagine shrinking our entire observable universe to be the same size as Earth. The bit we can't see, the entire universe, would be the same as the observable universe yet again. Imagine that for just a moment. It's a truly unimaginable size that completely shatters our concept of scale. And yet, perhaps the most jaw-dropping estimate of all is that of an actually infinite universe. Our measurements for the curvature of space are now so close to zero that it really begs the question, could the universe be infinite? If you'd have asked astrophysicists that question 20 years ago, the vast majority would have said no. 
But these days, with all of our evidence, the answer really does gravitate towards the terrifying, yet fascinating conclusion that yes, it really might be.